Being geographically located as the gateway to Bharat, Punjab bore the maximum brunt of the invasions. It is not the current Indian state of Punjab alone, but the extensive land including regions in the current day Pakistan. The lives of the 10 Sikh Gurus and their followers is a saga of valor and sacrifice in the pages of our history. The philosophical foundation laid by Guru Nanak Ji and the steadfast commitment of his successors to the cause of Dharma makes us wonder as to where they derived their strength from. They were willing to endure physical torture and killings of their family members to protect our culture. What would have happened to the cultural civilization fabric of Bharat had there been no wall of the Sikh Khalsas to withstand the Mughal and the Durrani onslaught of religious conversions? Guru Nanak Ji was born in 1469 in a Hindu Kshatriya family. Nanak's childhood days reflected his divine grace. He and his followers did not attempt to create a new path or a new religion opposed to our Sanatana Dharma, but rather were in alignment to Sanatana Dharma. Sri Guru Nanak tried to establish a friendship that transcended religion, caste and gender boundaries. In order to bring social equality, Sri Guru Nanak established community kitchens called Langars, where food was served to people of all sections of the society. His popular teachings were Vad Shako, meaning share with others and help those who are in need. Kirit Karo, meaning earn a honest living without exploitation and fraud. Nama Japo, meaning recite his name, meditate on God's name. When Jahangir executed the fifth Sikh Guru, Guru Arjan Singh, his son Har Govind vowed to organize a Sikh army to protect the nation. He armed the Sikhs, developed 52 armed bodyguards, a stable of 700 war horses, 300 horsemen and 60 gunmen. He built a steel fort at Amritsar called Lohagad and administered the place like a king. Thus started the Sikh kingdom. They fought battles after battles against Mughals and their merciless conversions. The death of a Guru gave rise to the next and the next. After the death of Guru Tej Bahadur, the responsibility of protecting the Sikh fell on the shoulders of his son Govind Rai. He became the great Guru Gobind Singh, the 10th Sikh Guru. The brutal execution of his father and great-grandfather at the hands of the Mughal kings made him determined to fight against the terrible regime. Guru Gobind Singh decided to organize the Sikh movement into a political and military regime. He chose the Panch Pyare and thus Kalsa was born. Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji and his family members have awakened such great fighting spirit in people. Guru Gobind Singh Ji was fighting against Mughals. Once his mother and his two sons, Fateh Singh and Zorawar Singh, seven years and nine years old, they were traveling. They were captured and brought in front of the Mughal governor, Wasir Khan. Wasir Khan ordered uh, them to get converted to Islam or embrace death. They said, we are the lions of the great Guru. We are ready to face death. And they chanted, Wahe Guru Ji Ki Khalsa, Wahe Guru Ji Ka Fateh. They were not ready to give up their dharma, their religion. They stood there with all courage and conviction they had to face this toughest torture. But they were not ready to give up their religion. Recently, Prime Minister Modi ji has declared that we will be celebrating Veer Bal Divas on 26 December, the day they sacrificed their lives. Many brave leaders later emerged among the Sikhs who have left their mark on Bharat. Nawab Kapoor Singh, who reorganized the Khalsa into five groups of missiles. Jassa Singh Ahuwalia, who aligned with the Marathas and other forces, killed the Afghani forces led by the Durrani kings. Then came into picture the young Maharaja Ranjit Singh. He captured Lahore and Jammu and established the authority of the Sikh missiles. He renovated and rebuilt the Harmandir Sahib with marble and gold. He expanded into Atak, Multan, Peshawar, Kashmir and other provinces of present-day Pakistan and Afghanistan, winning over 15 major battles. Ranjit Singh's reign brought peace, order and security to the people living in his kingdom. He built several gurudwars, temples and even mosques. He invested heavily on arms and weapons, establishing manufacturing facilities for making cannons, gunpowder, mining, etc. The prosperity of the empire grew as trade routes were reopened. He was the custodian of Kohinoor diamond, which went into the hands of the Duranis from the Mughals. After defeating the Duranis, Ranjit Singh reclaimed the diamond and offered it to Jagannath Temple in Puri. What would have happened to the cultural and civilization fabric of Bharat had there been no wall of the Sikh Khalsas to withstand the Mughal and the Durrani onslaught 
of religious conversion. Veer salutations to the lions of Punjab.